Megan, everyone, it's Amanda. Today I'm here to show you how to crochet these cute little Valentine's baby booties that I made. So here is a finished one, and we're going to work the other one together. So you can see, you'll need some buttons. I got these at Joanne. I'm using the middle ones. I had to buy two. Now I have some other cute little buttons to work with for something else. But I liked the brown and the pink of this right here. So I'm going to put a link to these on the project page. And you also need Lion Brand 24-7 cotton. And this, oops, this way, Cafe LA. And also in Ecru. See, I've used this one more. I made some other, the basic baby booties are made with this skein too. So yeah, then you'll need those. And then yarn needle to carry this with me. I've got one large and one small put in the same package, but I just picked these up for 99 cents. I have a package of large ones and a package of small ones, and then just put one of each so that I can take it in my go bag. And that way I always have one because lately I found that I was only had a plastic one and it just wasn't working as well. And my trusty metal one was at home and so I didn't have it with me. So yarn needle, buttons, yarn, and a size G crochet hook. I really still like my Clover soft touch hooks. I haven't tried their new ones yet, but I love these still and these are my go-to hooks. Right. So let's get started. I'm going to start out by making a basic sole. Now you'll need to make one of each color for each shoe. So for making both pair, I mean both sets of boots, both shoes, can talk to me. See, this one already has one sole made in the e -crew. You can see it in there. And then one in the Cafe LA. So you'll have two soles, and then we'll put them together to make a nice sturdy bottom. I've seen some people put like cardboard in the middle. You can, you're welcome to do that, where you cut it the same size, or just something to give it a little more stability. Personally, I don't do that. I like the way it is, just like this. And we'll make the two soles, put them together, and then we'll work on the actual body of it. Okay, and we'll start out with our slip knot. Okay, put it around the hook. And I always think about making a circle around the arm. And then you pull it tight. Okay, so for this pattern, we start with a foundation chain of eight. Okay, so it's pretty small. Okay, there we go. Eight chains, simple enough. Now, I like to work into the back of my chains. You'll see this on all my videos. I work into these back little bumps right here, especially when I'm working a double-sided piece where I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna crochet onto the other side. That way it's very easy to see your stitches on the back side. So we need to make three single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So I'm gonna get it. Here's the first little bump. This is the second one. So go ahead and insert your hook here and make three single crochets in this one. Now, if you've never made a single crochet before, have your hook in here, you yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through both. And there's a single crochet, so let's do that again. Pull it through, and there are two. Okay, you can see I'm getting the exact same little loop, and three. Now, two single crochets in the next one. So you look, here's the next little bump. There. Just one single crochet in here. And one single crochet in the next. There we go. Got that part. And now we need to half double crochet the next two. So you, for half double crochet, you yarn over. Here's your bump, see it right there? Put this little back bump of the chain again. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Okay, let's do that again. Yarn over, find the next little bump. Put it in. 
run over cold loop. Pull through all three. Okay, see if I have double crochet two. Now we're left with two. Oops, sorry, my yarn had a little placement. Two more chains. See right here and here. Now we're gonna double crochet in this one. So yarn over. Insert your hook. Yarn over. Pull up loop. Yarn over. Now for a double crochet, you pull through two loops. And yarn over and pull through the other two. So it makes it just a little bit taller than this half double crochet. You can see how it's kind of progressing from single crochet, half double, double. It's getting longer and longer. And now for this very last one, we're going to double crochet seven in the same spot. That's going to take us all the way around so we can work on the back side. So let me get my yarn ready here. It's wanting to curl up on me for some reason. And let's go ahead. There we go. It's going to be hard to get that first one. And this yarn has been really good about, you know, it doesn't split. And it's easy to get my hook in the stitches and something I really liked about this Lion Brand 24-7 cotton. I do like cotton yarn, especially for baby booties and things. So this has been a really nice yarn. Okay, there's two. Two more. You see, it's starting to make a little bit of a hole there, which is all right, because there's so many going into the same one. Okay, and seven. Oh, my tail's getting in the way. Okay, so I've got my seven double crochet. See how it is nice, made a nice little curve for us, going all the way around. And now we're just going to mirror what we did here on the other side, so that we have a match. So I always take the tail end pull it this way to help me see the next stitch which see now we have to look at the other side of our starting chain you can easily see all these so here's the next one we're going to work into so double crochet one right in here now sometimes these get a little tight oh it's not the right make sure you just go under these two loops sometimes I have to take my nail to help me get in because the foundation chain can get a little tight on the bottom there we go. Okay, double crochet. Nope, it's really tight. It doesn't like to come through. I keep thinking I need to make my foundation chain a little bit looser. And then I don't do it. I just automatically go ahead and do it the way that I'm used to. Alright, so you're going right here for your half double. That first one's always the tightest there. This is a little easier. So half double, two of these. One. And then two single crochets in the next two. So here's a single. And another single. Alright, and that's the first round. Do not join with the slip stitch or anything. We're just going to work into the next round. Alright, and now we're ready for round two. So this one is a little tricky if you're not used to working in the round and not joining with the slip stitch because this kind of looks like it might be a stitch, and you might try to work your way in there, but it is not. It's where we turned our turning chain. So this, where you can clearly see is a full stitch, it's kind of loose, is our first stitch. So you're going to make two single crochet in these three stitches that we did in the end. So let's do two in this one. Two in the next. Okay, and then two in the third right here. We're increasing at our heel area. This is going to end up being the heel of the booty. Okay, now we're going to single crochet six stitches along the side. One, 
to you. Three. Four. Five. And six. And that takes us up to the front of the shoe. And now we're going to work the next five stitches. We're going to do two single crochets. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, and five. So now I check to make sure that's going to take me all the way around. And if you look, it will. One, two, three, four, five, and it's even. So I'm like, okay, we're ready to start with two single crochet in each one of these five stitches. One more, and now I have ten stitches where there were five, and now single crochet six will bring us back to the beginning. So if you mark your stitches, you would have this one right here marked. And when I started out, I did. But now I typically don't because I've made a lot of baby booties. And I can tell this is the last stitch and then it kind of jumps up. So that's my marker to myself. But if you're unsure, a nice stitch marker right in that first stitch would help. And there are definitely times that I use those. Especially when I'm doing like an animal and a yarn that's hard to see or something. But for me, if I don't do it in these. Okay, there we go with that. It's round two. Okay, now we're ready for round three. In round three, you're going to work a single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet in the next and repeat. It's going to be a total of three times. So you're going to go around the heel here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To again, increase this part right here. So I often count to nine in my head. Um, when I'm doing this, so I can, my stitches have kind of turned here. All right, here we go. Okay, now we're two single crochet in the next one. And then two here. stitches around there now. And again, we'll single crochet six. That's going to be just the basic right here. Now, if you're working the larger size of these, really the only difference in this part is that you would single crochet eight instead of six right here. So it just adds a couple of single crochets. Okay, so I've single crocheted six. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did on the heel up here at the toe. So single crochet one, single crochet two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And you can see how that will bring us around. Go all the way around the toe.
14, 14, and 15. So I've gone around two, now I'm going to single crochet six again to get me back to the beginning. So then round four, we're going to increase only along the heel portion and then single crochet around the rest. So we will do one, two, and then two here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you're going to do twelve stitches for your heel shaping. So let's do this. Alright, so here's my 12, and now when I single crochet around the rest, I should end up with 39, so let's see. Okay, here's 38 and 39. And now it's time to make an invisible join. Okay, to make an invisible join, we need to cut our yarn. And instead of fastening off, instead of going around and pulling it through, you're just going to pull this through. And so you leave your stitch looking like this. And a lot of people use a yarn needle for this, but a lot of times I don't even have my yarn needle handy, so I'm going to do it with my hook. So you go the second stitch over, and then you yarn over, pull it through, and come up in that last stitch, the one that we ended on, right in the middle, and put it right in there, yarn over, and draw it through this stitch. And then when you kind of, so that looks much better than fastening off and having a knot. So this is what it should look like in the front. I said if you did the larger size, you're going to have two extra chains here, which will make it just a little bit longer, because we would do eight instead of six single crochets here, and you'll end up with 43 instead of 39 but everything else is the same, and this is what your back side should look like. So you just need to weave in the ends. So let me get out my yarn needle. And for this I'm going to go with the smaller one. I've got a couple sizes to keep with me, so when I'm working on 
different projects, I can have them. All right, and I'll show you how I weave in my ends here. So I'll thread my yarn through. Kind of messed my yarn up over there, but it's fine. And I probably would have should have left a little, a little bit of a longer tail than this, but I don't know. I started out with it kind of small, and I weave it through. You know, just three or four stitches this way. Pull it through. And then I skip that first little bar. And especially on these, I do it this way because I know this is going to be inside. It's not going to be, you know, pulled or tugged at very much. So when I do this part, a lot of times I go ahead and cut it off there. You are welcome to go through again if you like. You do it three times. I know some people like to do three, and sometimes I do. But I said, I know for this. It's there we go. Okay, so that's one end open it. Now I have this one where I did my invisible join. So I'm going to put that on my yarn needle next. And I'm going to do the same thing with it. Alright, so I'm going to go on the inside here. And I'm going to go through these stitches. You know, you can see, if you're not used to weaving in ends, you try to get them in here, see where these little, I'm getting it into the stitch, see the V's. And so I'll go through, you know, a few of these. And then skip this little bar right here, and I'll put it through again. a little bit of a space here where you can kind of tell it's not exactly the same but it is really close and so I do a lot of these invisible joins with my baby booties but this is the sole you make one in each color I'm not going to do the other color on camera I'm just going to do that one on my own so if you follow the exact same steps for the other color whatever color you choose I'm going to use ecru and then we'll come back and join them Okay, so now we have our two soles made. You can see I have one in each color, and I'm going to put the wrong sides together. So they should look like this, and you're going to put them together, and you join your yarn. Okay, you're using the main color, so I've got my brown here, and any stitch, it doesn't matter. So go through a stitch, and then go through the same stitch on the other side. And I don't usually do a knot here to join. I just pull it up like this. That way I don't have a knot on this side later on. And you're just gonna slip stitch in each stitch all the way around. And you should end up with the same number of stitches. So you should have 39 slip stitches when you're done. And this will join the two soles so that we'll be ready to create the body of the shoe. Make sure you're getting in all, make sure you're in both loops of both colors. Draw it up and pull it through.
Okay, now come to the last one. So, so we have a space here. We're going to cut your yarn. Just like we did with this single crochet, you're going to make an invisible join. So you're going to bring this up. Let's pull this one a little tighter. And you're going to put your hook in. Right here. Yarn over. I can do it while looking at the camera. Pull it through. Oh. It's not that easy to do. I'm not looking at my actual stitches. I'm looking at the camera. There we go. Pull it through. Okay, now this one's a little loose because we haven't woven it in or anything. And then you go just in this one loop right here. Yarn over and pull it down here. And then you just kind of adjust your stitches a little bit, pull that in. And there is your sole. So just weave in these ends. A lot of times I'll just weave mine in through here, hide them in the middle because you won't ever see that. And then we'll come back and make the body. All right, once your ends are woven in, you're ready to begin the body of the shoe. And this one's a really simple pattern. So you're going to take your hook and look at the heel and look for the very center stitch. So you can see on mine, it's right there. And that's where I'm going to insert my hook under both stitches, both loops of this slip stitch. Just like that. Okay, again, don't make a knot, a slip knot or anything, just pull it through like this. And you're ready to go. So we chain one and you single crochet in every stitch around, including this one. So you should end up 39. Or if you're making the larger size, 43. Forgot to mention that before. When you are making the larger one, it's very similar, just you're gonna have a few more single crochets going on the side, but the rest of it is the same. And sometimes it's a little hard to work into the loops. They get a little tight. Just force your hook under there and single crochet. Okay, so I've single crocheted all the way around here, and I've come to the end. You can see I've single crocheted in the last one, and you're going to join with a slip stitch. So go into this stitch, and just slip stitch to close this round right here. So now we're ready for round two. You chain one, and single crochet eleven. There's 10 and 11. Now for the next part, we're going to single crochet two and then do a decrease, which is single crochet two together. So we're going to single crochet in these two and then decrease these right here. We're going to do that four times total. Now we get to work the decrease for the toe area. 
We're going to single crochet in the next two. So we'll single crochet two. And now we're going to decrease called single crochet two together. So pull the loop, insert hook in the next one, pull the loop. And then we're going to repeat that three times. So a total of four. So here we go single crochet one, two, and now single crochet two together, like so. Okay, that's two times done. And now single crochet one. Single crochet two, single crochet two together. And the last time. One, oops, and two. Pull it through my last loop here. And now single crochet two together. And then after you do that, you have decreased this toe area where there were 16 stitches around the toe. Now you have 12. And then you're going to single crochet 12 more to get you back to the beginning. Okay, when you reach the end, again, just slip stitch in the first one. Okay, two rows done. Now this third row, we're going to kind of decrease this toe in the heel area a little bit because it's getting, you can see it's kind of getting wider and you really don't want that. So you're going to chain one. You just do one single crochet. And then you single crochet two together to kind of bring this corner in. Single crochet nine. There's two. single crochet one time and then two together around to decrease this toe area a little bit more. So there's one and single crochet two together and again doing it a total of four times. One time. times. Three times. And four times. Let me just single crochet. Eight.
single crochet two together. Put this side. And single crochet in this last stitch. And join with a slip stitch for row three. See how it's bringing this toe area in so it's not so loose. Okay, and for round four, we're going to chain one, single crochet nine, Okay, now after these nine, we're going to start working in the back loop only for the next few stitches. So you're going to only work in this part back here and leave this part free. What that does, and I'll show you the finished one, is it gives this little look right here, okay, because we're leaving that loop free. We're going to work these stitches behind it. Alright, so we half double crochet two together, back loop only, so yarn over. Just in the back loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, same thing again, just in the back loop, and then you yarn over and pull through all of these. Oops, that last one's getting stuck on there. I don't know what I got going on right there. I'm gonna loop this. Okay, so it's just kind of hard to draw through all of those loops now. We're going to double crochet three together, so yarn over, put it in the back, draw the loop, yarn over, and just draw through two, yarn over, back loop only, draw a loop, just through two, and one more time, yarn over. Loop, yarn over, draw through two, and then you yarn over, and draw through all three. Okay, let's do that again. part there and see that's right there in the front and then we're going to half double crochet two together back loop only okay that's got our nice little front area there and now we single crochet the rest of the way in both loops okay you only want that look in the front Number nine and ten. All right, so you can see the basic shape here. We're going to make an invisible join with single crochet. So cut your yarn, pull it through. Now remember, with single crochet, 
you go to the second stitch, so we're going to go right here. Pull it through. We want it to come right back in the middle of that last one. There we go. The basic little body of our shoe. So now we're going to weave in the ends. Here, let me grab my needle. Okay, so for this end, I go ahead and weave it in through here. Pull that in nice tight down in here. Weave it down. And then off and go across a few stitches like this. Just make sure it's secure. And then I take the end and put it right between these two soles. So it's not come, and then make it come out somewhere down further. That way when you cut it off, the end is hidden in between. And now we still have this other end in here that we also have to weave in. And I'll do the same thing, but since I went this way with that other yarn, now I'm going to go over here so that I don't disturb that tail end. Usually I just do three or four stitches over. Skip this, come back around right through here. Now I do the same thing, I go in between the two soles and out. Okay, so that's the basic part. See here, all we have to do is to put on our little tie. Okay, so now we're putting on our little straps and you can see where I started on this one, I came across from right here. So go ahead and join your yarn in the, depending upon which one you're making, obviously this one's gonna go opposite. So if you're making the, this is gonna end up being the right shoe, you're gonna put it on the left side and have to think about it the other way. So go ahead and think about coming right across here. And put it in. and join your yarn. Okay, now this is pretty simple. I just chained 30. Oops, took my pull that tighter later. some yarn out there. So when I was designing these, I chained, like this is 25, and then I was like, okay, how far is it gonna go? Okay, not gonna reach quite that far, so I was like, all right, we need a few more. So I made 30. Okay, 
And then, okay, so it's going to come over and it's going to grab that button. And it's going to go back across. So if you look on this one, you can see where we join. And there's one, two, three, four, five stitches in between. So you come over here. Other side. One, two, three, four, five stitches in between. So it's going to go right here in this stitch which is the one that was the invisible join so it's hiding a little bit there we go and just slip stitch it in place and if you want you could leave it towards you know across this I like to twist mine so I did it like that so when you weave these ends in then you can get your button so let's pretend my ends are woven in here. Move this one out of the way. Actually, I can go ahead and cut that and fasten off because actually what I did with it was I pulled it through and then I kind of made an invisible join with right here with these stitches. And so you just kind of figure out where the best placement for the button will be. figure out where it's going to go and you know because it's just going to go around this part right here and I took some of the same thread the yarn the crew and I just put a couple of stitches in to hold it in place move all the ends in and that was it